What up, Interverse? Josh here from Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern day Renaissance man. And today we're here addressing a really great question about focus. And this comes from someone who watched one of my earlier videos and they said, hey, I have all these multiple interests and I would love to become a modern day polymath, a modern day Renaissance man, but how do I narrow it down and also, how can I learn more things at once? And so I'm going to read off his question real quick, and then we'll get into uh, some of my tips and tricks that I would use to, to go down this path. So here we go. Hi, Josh. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate the guidance you're giving us, future accomplished polymaths, but I'm kind of stuck lost to be precise. My areas of interest are music, philosophy, psychology, and physics, or science in general. I don't know where to start. I've tried many strategies to learn things at the same time, but I've, every time I just lose control and I feel like a failure. It's really frustrating. The thing is I'm too impatient, inconsistent, and want to learn everything all at once. Who doesn't? Maybe it's because I'm young, I'm 20, soon to be 21, and inexperienced at life. I can't focus on one thing at a time because I feel like I'm losing time that I could have invested in my other interests. So many goals I have, yet no progress I've made. Like, now here comes his true question. How did Da Vinci become an expert in all the fields he studied? He was a genius, yes, but he must have had a way to be organized, right? Anyways, thanks. It's truly a blessing I found you on my rocky and confused path. First of all, let me just say to O and any of you guys out there watching, thank you so much for tuning into my channel. And to O in particular, thank you for making a really great question that I think everybody has struggled with at one point in their life or another, in some form or another. And so, what I want to do is just give a quick rundown of what I think are some really good steps for anybody who are who is having this trouble. Now the first thing is, oh, you're not alone. A lot of people go through this. As a matter of fact, I think probably the majority of people do. What sets you apart is that you see this as an issue, as a problem that you want to fix. And that is a really great thing, which leads me to my first tip, which is to ask the right questions and to ask bigger questions, which is what you're doing. Not many people ask questions when it comes to important issues like this. And they go their entire lives just saying that there's no way to solve these things. And because of that, they never get started. And if you never get started, you're stuck. You don't, you don't go anywhere. So the first thing and you've already got the right the right idea is ask the right questions second thing I would recommend is and this is gonna be a shameless plug continue to look for channels like mine and if you haven't already please subscribe and videos that are going to answer those questions and that that are going to help you along your path there's not going to be one answer that's going to solve every problem that you have. It's going to be a lifelong journey that you go on. But if you choose to accept this mission, then what will happen is you are going to continue to develop and broaden your horizons and branch out to become the most truest form of who you are. And when you are like that, what happens is you become so unique that everybody is going to appreciate the gift that you bring to their life. So tip number three is going to be to buy a book. And there are plenty of books out there that, that could address this, but I think the most appropriate book is Mastery by Robert Greene. He is a multiple best-selling author. He wrote such books as The 48 Laws of Power, The Art of Seduction, 
The Laws of War, and The Fiftieth Law with 50 Cent. He's one of my favorite authors, and I highly re recommend all of those books to anyone who is an aspiring polymath, but particularly this book for your question. In it, he talks about how to achieve mastery in the in the, the areas of life that you find important. And based on O's interests here, science, where he has philosophy, psychology, music, all of those things are different fields. But in each of those fields are little niches that are very specific. And what's going to happen is as you continue down your path and you start to really immerse yourself in all of these different fields, you're going to find connections, things that other people don't see. And from that, something's going to evolve that only you will understand, and only you will know, and only you will be able to talk to, and that will become your expertise, in short. So, highly recommend this book. The fourth thing is to find a mentor. You asked in here about Da Vinci and how he was able to um, learn all of these different topics. Well, the first thing that we have to keep in mind is, although it seems like Da Vinci and Einstein and Steve Jobs were geniuses, they weren't. They were just regular people like you and I. And I know that may be a little disappointing to everybody out there, but when we, when we accept the reality that they were just normal people, what that means, that's a great gift to us because that means that we can achieve the same amount of uh, success and influence in our lives if we only, only follow the steps that they did. And I'm not talking about, you know, painting or creating, you know, scientific dis uh, discoveries. What I'm talking about is the steps of mastery that they found to for for what their gifts were you have been given different gifts than I have than they have each of us has something that we can give and share with the world that will add value and so da Vinci given his given the fact that he was an illegitimate son to a gentleman basically someone who was rich and affluent in that society he couldn't go to university so he had to have an informal education. What does that mean? That means one, he learned a lot of stuff on his own. He had access to things that most people didn't have back then, like paper and books. But essentially, Da Vinci went out on his own. He would go in the field and he would just start drawing. Think, anything that he saw that, that interests him. So like flowers and birds. And, and even at that early age, he started to learn, okay, by process of failure, basically, how what the right way was and what the wrong way was to, to draw and paint these things. And then eventually, his father was able to hook him up with one of the, the master painters of the time. And because of that, da Vinci now had a mentor. And he spent his early years mentoring with that master. And so I highly recommend that in the fields that you are interested in, you find people who are ahead of you, or maybe even a master who you can sit under and learn all of their wisdom and information that they have. The other benefit that you're going to have when you do this is that you're going to immerse yourself in that industry, whatever industry it is that that you're interested in. And when you do that, you're going to discover many things. What the standards are, what is expected, no matter what. You're also going to find out what the flaws are. Where, where are the tiny little holes that need to be fixed? And those are the things that you should really focus on. And then lastly, you're going to meet people and network and, and create <clears throat> beneficial relationships with people who you can then leverage later on in life because the fact of the matter is no one person has all the answers it takes 
multiple people, groups of people. And the more people you know who have those answers and you can leverage them, the, the easier it will be to go down your, that path. So um, lastly, I would say this, and a lot of this is covered in that book, but I would say that you need to think about not only what are you interested in, but what are the things that you're so interested in that you could fail a thousand times and you would keep going because you love it so much. Because that's the amount of passion and desire that you need to have um, when you're going after your life's work. And only you are going to know what that is. And that can evolve over time. That can change, right? We, we talked about Arnold Schwarzenegger in my last video that you watched where, you know, first he wanted to be a bodybuilder. And then when he became the world's strongest bodybuilder, then he be, wanted to become a movie star. And then when he became a movie star, he wanted to become a politician. Your life's goal can kind of evolve over time. But whatever it is now, you need to think, okay, what am I so passionate about that I could fail a hundred times and keep getting up and keep fighting the good fight? And then the second thing is you have to ask yourself, of, those, of that thing, what can I do that will bring value to other people's lives that that they that they might pay for because hopefully this is going to be tied into some sort of vocation that you have so with that being said with all of that being said you're still very young and i and i'm not saying that as a negative i'm saying that as a positive you're at the point in your life you're right on track where you should be entering into an apprenticeship for me that was joining the military because unlike you, I didn't even have questions like this yet. I just knew that I needed to get out from where I was and go see the world. And so what I did was I joined the military and it taught me so much about professionalism and leadership and teamwork and I could go on and on and on. That was my apprenticeship. Everyone is going to have their, their own apprenticeship that they find, whatever is congruent to you at the time. But the point is, find it, decide what you want to do, and then go do it. And don't be afraid to fail because everybody fails no matter, no matter what, right? Michael Jordan missed more balls than he made. But he still is considered to be one of the greatest basketball players of all time. And that's because he wasn't afraid to fail. So don't be afraid to fail. And right now, just embrace all of those things that interest you. And don't be so hard on yourself that uh, you know you haven't found that one focus. And then the last thing, because I, I noticed in your question here too, you, you say, you want to learn one thing, but then you feel like you're taking away from the other. This is the really interesting thing that happens once you start to immerse yourself in all these different fields. Is Like I said before, you're going to see connections between different topics that most people don't see. And I'll give you a great example. I love to weightlift, right? I love to go into the gym. I go every day and I lift weights. And when I first started, I couldn't I couldn't pick up hardly any of the weights. I had to kind of start on the machines and just do running. And had I went to the heaviest weight that I can lift now and try to lift it, one, it wouldn't even have gotten off the ground. And two, it probably would have hurt me beyond compare. I had to build up to that. And to build up to that, I couldn't just work one muscle group. I had to start with light weights and work on multiple muscle groups until they all built up and I had given them enough resistance to grow strong enough to where I can now lift that very hard weight. And just like all of those different muscle groups came together to give me the power to lift that one heavy weight, the same thing is true with all the different fields that you're going to study and learn they're going to develop mental muscles that you have that will allow you to do very impressive things in the field that you decide to go into. And just like I used 
weightlifting as an example for what I do, you're going to find metaphorical things and, and ties in everything you do. And the more you immerse yourself in those things you love, the more you're going to find those gems of wisdom that come from, you know, for example, I'm a writer and I am an orator, meaning that I do a lot of speaking, public speaking. They both complement each other. But what we see is most writers are introverts and most speakers are extroverts. But there, there are so many things that they both could learn from each other if someone were to take on those tasks and see where the hidden connections are. For example, when I write, I learn in my mind, I, I ingrain all of these different techniques of speaking and grammar and spelling so that when I'm up on stage or talking to someone or giving a YouTube video, I can articulate my points better. The opposite holds true too. For a writer to get their work noticed, they can't just use sheets of paper. They have to actually be able to talk to people. They have to go and speak to them and give pitches and, and be able to network. And so there's a social dexterity there that, that is required for that job. And that's why I believe those two have connections that most people don't see. And that's just one example. So here we are. We're, our, we're about to hit 17 minutes, which I think is a pretty good response. I hope that some of this information has helped. <clears throat> and if you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. And what will happen is you'll get information like this. And you'll be updated anytime I give, have new videos or new information. Also, for those of you who haven't checked it out yet, I wrote this nice little book right here called About Face. If you're a military member, this is three badass tips for an awesome military transition. And it's yours truly giving personal insight into how to take your skills and abilities and, and translate them into the civilian sector. But, anyways, until next time, you guys... Take it easy.